a retired pilot with the Canadian Forces, a veteran who served during the world's worst conflicts, but ask Yves Grenier on camera, and he is silent. He keeps quiet about the way his country has been treating him. But for every soldier muted, there is another who is outspoken. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Meet Jody Minnick, a sniper with the Canadian Forces. His job, eliminate threats. When the Canadian forces asked him to go to Afghanistan, he was happy to accept. <laughs> but in the heat of combat, he recalls the day that changed his life. Reality struck. I was last in, of the four, and the three guys went. And when it was my turn, I, I stepped through the, 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 the opening. And uh, when there was five meters between me and the guy in front of me, I turned and stepped, and that's when I detonated the device. And then a big orange flash. And, uh, and then, you know, you realize you're flying through the air and then you land on, the, and then I landed on the ground and that's when, you know, the pain started and everything and, and, and you, shit got real. His bag, stained with his own blood, is the only thing that survived his tour in Afghanistan with him. I haven't had a raise since I stepped on that fucking bomb. Because part of the system, black and white, hit by a car on duty or blown up in combat, is promotions, postings, courses, everything comes to a screeching halt because you're not worth putting any more money into. You know, my whole career I'd thought about if you get smashed on the job, it's a uh, pension for life. That's the deal I thought we had. Uh, they changed the deal. They didn't ask us because we would have told them that no, one time payment, especially 250 grand. A report submitted to the Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs in 2010 outlines the differences. Under the new system, Soldiers injured in combat who can no longer work receive an earnings loss benefit, 75% of their pre-release salary until the age 65. The old system, a disability pension for life. Well, right now I'm still a member, so D&D &D has been handling it, right? So Veterans Affairs isn't involved. Um, you know, I've been told everything that soldiers have been receiving from D&D &D is in far more generous than what Veterans Affairs would ever do, which kind of is very, it's a scary thing to hear. Tonight, we have a motion to actually help the department not be cut in its budget. We'll but it gets worse. On March 6, 2012, Conservatives voted unanimously to cut the budget of Veterans Affairs, 226 million over the next couple of years. In a letter to Post Media News, the Veterans Affairs Minister maintains veterans can still expect a hassle-free service. Since the introduction of the new Veterans Charter, the Royal Canadian Legion has been helping veterans navigate their way through the process. The director, Andrea One Sue, wants to see updates made. Charter is the post-65. At what happens after the age of 65? These are young men and women that have served their country, that have been injured, attributable to their service, and they have permanent injuries, which is why they're on earnings loss benefit and cannot work. And at age 65, we put them into a category of being um, on the poverty line. A fight is where these former soldiers excel. Sean Bruyé is one veteran who used his military bravado to take on the government, who violated his privacy and withheld his benefits. On the day after that I testified to the Senate opposing this lump sum benefit, that the persons that held my personal files in Veterans Affairs talked to the people that designed this lump sum benefit and said, look, we know you're not happy with them. We're going to give you his medical files. And that set up a relationship that over the next year and a half uh, allowed Veterans Affairs to share my personal medical information with uh, more than uh, 850 individuals when I started putting in requests to prove that this was going on, um, you know, that uh, the pages started flowing in. So I'm now up to 20,000 pages that Veterans Affairs has circulated around on me, and there's still apparently another 20,000 pages being withheld by the department. But if governments are going to go into debt to send our soldiers off to war, I mean, clearly they can go into debt to pay for those soldiers. Interview requests were sent out to Veterans Affairs Canada and Department of National Defense. D&D &D did not respond. Veterans Affairs replied by saying their services are focused on helping make the transition from the military to civilian life. 
79% of transitioning soldiers received employment after the military, excluding those retired and permanently incapacitated. Perry Gray suffers post-traumatic stress disorder. He was originally assessed at 30%, but that has since been increased to 70. A decade later, he is fighting the country he helped defend. He says the focus with the new Veterans Charter is all wrong. The new Veterans Charter was to help everybody uh, leave the military, but th the focus should still be on helping those who have serious medical or health conditions, and that's where the support is not sufficient. You know, like this is an experiment that won't, we won't see the results until I'm 65. So we got 30 years to go, right? And that's the problem. Why at 65, when I'm going to be entering a time of my life when I need better care, because I'm a double amputee, instead, all my benefits stop. No longer just the 401, the Highway to Heroes reminds Canadians of the sacrifices its soldiers have made. Close to one of Canada's biggest military bases is NATO's premier military transition specialist, Audrey Prenzel. I feel that these men and women deserve it. And I don't know of many other avenues that they have. Emails from her clients show dissatisfaction with DND and Veterans Affairs, like this one. My application has been approved, November 11th. No one has called me, so I decided to take the initiative and contact you. Dated February 20th, 2012. Tried to go through these other organizations that are affiliated with the military. They just say, you know what, it just wasn't the level of service I need, the level of thought that I need. Um, it wasn't the, the, the caliber of what I'm looking for. Is you just, you keep hoping for, they'll, you know, they'll get it. That They're on our side. Because, you know, it seems to be a pattern. The, vet, the veteran or the veterans will come out and say, it's not working. We're not getting what we needed. For every soldier who chose to speak with us, there was another who refused. Worried about access to their benefits, they remain mute. Jody risks a lot being outspoken against the way Canada treats its veterans, but throughout his military career, it's taught him one thing, standing up for his fellow soldier. At what point does someone say, okay, obviously there's a problem? And that's the, that's the, you know, that's the core issue is, are they there to, 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 to support us or be a barrier to that support? I don't know. It seems to me, it, it appears to be, that they're not, you know, my best interests aren't necessarily their, their priority. Jared Fisk, 25th hour, Ottawa. Tell them that God's gonna cut you down.